What's going on guys? Welcome back to the TCG Empire YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a look at Espathra EX. Now Espathra EX was released in Paldean Fates. And with Charizard and Ancient Box just doing well at the Orlando Regionals, Espathra has become a deck that is really good into both of those. Now its Zard matchup is good, but it's, you know, you still have those turns sometimes where you might fall short, but... Either way, Espathra is a really strong deck into those two, and it's simply because of a Dazzling Gaze. As long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, attacks used by your opponent's active Pokemon cause a colorless more. So this turns Charizard's attack into 3 energy, it turns Roaring Moon's attack into 3 energy, and then you also have Psyball, which does 30 plus 30 for each energy attached to both active Pokemon. And it's a Grass type, which means that you're hitting weakness on those main attackers in Ancient Box and Roaring Moon. It's very strong, especially when being paired with cards like Zatu. Zatu, Clairvoyant Sense, once during your turn, you can attach a basic Psychic Energy card from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. And if you do, uh, you draw two cards, so it becomes really strong at being able to power up your Pokemon. And then we're playing a 2-2 line of Banette, one Banette EX with Everlasting Darkness, 30 damage, you item lock your opponent. And then Poltergeist, your opponent reveals their hand and does 60 damage times the amount of trainers you have there. And then we have the Puppet Offering Banette, so that way you can cycle supporters in the late game. Just in case you run into some issues where, you know, you need a supporter for game, but it's in the discard, Banette can help you do that. And with playing the Banette EX, you might as well also play the Banette, since they both evolve from Shepet. And being paired with that, we have Pokemon League Headquarters. The attacks used by each basic Pokemon in play cost one colorless more. So against things like Ancient Box specifically, if you have a Headquarters in play, you Iono your opponent to say two cards and you have a Spather in the active. The Roaring Moon is going to need four energy to be able to attack and it's just not a good time. Uh, the Ace buck we're playing is Hero's Cape so that way you guys can have that extra HP buff. Um, that way you're not getting one shot really by a whole lot. They have to two shot you while you're also two shotting. And then we have Rigid Band too just so that way you can take 30 less damage on the stage ones that the cards are attached to. So... That's pretty much it. Uh, the deck list um, is super simple. Radiant Alakazam is in here for Painful Spoons. There are some niche plays that you can do where you can item lock while something is stuck in the active and just constantly move damage um, and win that way. So it definitely is solid, but um, I think that's pretty much it for the list. So as always, the deck list will be posted right here so you guys have a full clean view of it. And in the description will also be the 60 card list I used in today's video in case you guys want to copy and paste it into Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. Thank you for all of the love and support. You guys have been killing it on all of the videos. Let's shoot for 10 likes on today's video. Um, you guys have been supporting me endlessly, and I really appreciate you. So again, if you do enjoy today's video, do me a favor. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Otherwise, I will catch you guys in Monday's, late Monday's video. So enjoy the gameplay, and I'll catch you guys uh, later. See ya. Alrighty, guys. Let's get into the first game with a spathra um you know what i don't hate this start we don't have a supporter which blows but we do have a decent setup and depending on what my opponent is playing i have the free retreat pivot into something that i don't care about so i can't complain about this opening it just sucks that i'm gonna have to turn to grasping draw my opponent's playing Moon, but they can take a knockout on pretty much um, anything. So if I hit Tails here, it's ideal. Gives me the opportunity to grab another basic. And honestly, I'm trying to think of what I could get that I'm okay with losing. I can get rid of a Flittle. Um... Technically, though, with top decking research, I don't actually mind having the Cleffa be in the active. So, yeah, I think we'll just go for the Flittle. And then we'll go Buddy Buddy. And we'll grab another Flittle in case my opponent has Counter Catcher or anything or Prime Catcher. Go those two, and then next turn we evolve, evolve, do all that. We don't have to do anything. <clears throat> and then, depending on what my opponent ends up doing. Uh, we're in a good spot. They need a lot to be able to... Uh, well, they don't need a lot, but they have to gouging to take a knockout. And 
It also requires four energy instead of three, which means that it makes their sodas a little bit more awkward. So I don't I don't mind this hand. I just hope that I find some psychic energies next turn because that would be like super optimal for me to be able to knock out this moon. But we are hitting weakness, so if we get two psychics, that's 90, 180. So if my opponent has one energy on them, then that means that we take a knockout due to weakness because we'd be hitting 120. So, okay, so now my opponent just passes. So now we're just going to try and dig to get the donk. We'll go Clairvoyance Sense Attach 1, draw some cards. We have Binette, Buddy Buddy Puffin. We'll Puffin to thin the deck. Um, we'll just grab Shuff It. And then go for the research. Okay, there's a League Headquarters. So right now we're doing 30, 60, 120. So... I need to find another energy off of this saw too. And if I do, then I win. If I don't, then I have to take an extra turn to do it, but that's not horrible. So we'll go clairvoyance sense again, draw two, and we hit the psychic. So now we can just go here, evolve, just play everything out just to make sure I'm not missing anything. And then sideball for 240. Take a quick game on moon. Um, Weakness is a sucky factor in the game. Um, and I got lucky with hitting that third energy. So that was game number one. Quick game, but let's get into game two. Hopefully it lasts longer and we can showcase more of the control aspect of what Espathra can do. Alrighty guys, so into game two. Um, our start's honestly not looking too good. Uh, I'm going to have to research away a bunch of crucial cards and what I want to do. Um, so we're just gonna bench the Shuppet and pass and see what my opponent does next turn. They start Bidoof. They play Nest Ball, so probably Tina. So, okay, not Tina. Interesting. There's Luminion, so my opponent is grabbing a Supporter. They grab Iono. I'm okay with that. Iono would actually be, like, preferred. But worst comes to worst, I can still get an item lock going depending on what my opponent grabs or what they're playing. There's an Irida, so um, we might be playing against Chien Pao. In which case, if I can get an item lock going, that's actually huge. Especially considering the fact... Okay, so we're playing against Garchomp. Okay, so I might actually just dig and try and get the item lock next turn. It's gonna suck getting rid of a spathros but it's not the end of the world there's reversal so my opponent can retreat technically oh so they just instant charge okay so poffin that would have been great last turn but um we'll grab manaphy and then i guess we'll grab natu I could have grabbed Flittles, but I'm going to be getting rid of a lot, so uh, we'll just go Headquarters and Research. Then shove it. Capturing Aroma first. Tails. I grab a Basic. So we'll grab the Flittle, just so that way I still can attack. Then we'll go Ultra Ball, get rid of Poffin and Ultra Ball. Grab ourselves the Bennett EX. Sadly, we don't have any energy, uh, which means my opponent can get a turn two going, but all is well. The League Headquarters I didn't need to play, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, my opponent can take a prize, and then we still have the Flittle that has free retreat, which means that we have a free retreat pivot. If I would have seen energy, that would have been great. It just sucks that, like... This is how everything worked out, but it's not the end of the world. I still technically have a way that I can deal damage next turn. It just might not be a lot. There's a fighting energy. 
There's the nest stash. Interesting. So nest stash into bib. Arvin. Of course my opponent hits Arvin. There's the rare candy four seal stone. So they have the one card combo for getting out of Garchomp. There's the industrious incisors. My opponent's hand size is going to be small, which means that Banette's not going to be doing a whole lot when it comes to Poltergeist. And my opponent's attack can technically discard energy, so it's still going to not be the greatest. Goes the rare candy into the Garchomp. My opponent going to be able to hit 160 accelerate energy if they choose to but let's go into flittle get not to uh not really gonna do too much for us but i guess we'll just go rigid band and then play iono hopefully give my opponent some cards we get energy to work with which is great but we can't poltergeist so we'll just attach retreat Go into darkness for 30, so we at least item lock my opponent. They see, they can still hydro laser, which sucks. Um, but it's all good. There's the Rotom V. There's the Barboach, so <laughs> we're playing against Mill, which is great. We love playing against Mill. So there's the Industrious Incisors. Hydrolander for 160, so we still technically live one more Hydrolander, so it's not the end of the world. I think we're just going to go for Poltergeist and see what happens. So my opponent has to have all trainers, so let's see what happens. Poltergeist, 1, 2, 3, 4, so we hit 240. So not quite enough to take a knockout. My opponent's not item locked anymore. Technically, I could have item locked, kept it going, but it's not horrible. There's the nest stash. If I had a way to deal extra damage, I could technically item lock my opponent. Um, take a knockout that way. But technically, I can also bring up a barrel with something like a boss and then just keep moving damage after using Everlasting Darkness. There's the cape. There's an Ultra Ball, so my opponent's just thinning their hand now. My opponent's at 420. Hydrolander again for 160. Capturing Aroma, so we still technically have an out. We hit heads. So we can grab Zatu. I could have grabbed Shuppet, actually. That would have been a lot better for me to do. That's okay. So we'll go Zatu into the Clairvoyant Sense. Draw. We get Iono, which is pretty nice. Um, and we get Super Odd. I'm going to use the Super Odd now. Just put back the Aspathras and Zatus. And then just go Iono. All right. Well, those are some cards to definitely work with. So, go Zatu again. Draw. Ultra Ball, we get the Banette as well, which is huge. So, we'll go with Bathra here. Hit Tails. That's fine. That gets a basic out of the deck that I don't really need. Uh, we'll get rid of the Flutter Main. Then we can go Ultra Ball, get rid of Flutter Main and Headquarters. Grab the Aspathra. So... How much is this path we're doing? 369. 369, 12, 15. 
So this would be exactly enough to take a knockout, but I have to burn the two energy here. But I technically don't hate it, so it is what it is. I'm going to just go Cyball for 150. Put my opponent to 420, which means that we take a knockout. Take two. We do turn on reversal for my opponent, so they can technically mill us, which is annoying, but they have to be able to keep building back up to it. And thankfully, we do have things like Iono, so... We do have energy retrieval as well to build the Banet EX up. My opponent just going to use the Raging and Rocking to take a knockout. I mean, not knockout. I'm sorry, to mill five cards from our deck. There's Irida. There's a rare candy. Industrious incisors. My opponent is just doing it all. So there's five. So my opponent does mill boss, which is annoying, but it's not like critical or anything. So we can just go clairvoyant sense here, draw two. And then we'll hold the other one. We're going to deal 540, take a knockout. My opponent's probably going to promote Snorlax. And then we still have Puppet Offering to get around Snorlax. So um, we'll attach here. We'll hit for 600. And then our prize map is just going to be probably Luminion Squovit. So there's the block. Best case scenario, my opponent brings up a net and tries to block it. Okay, so they bring up Zatu. I'm fine with that. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. One more would be 18, so I can KO Luminion. There's an Iono. So we only get three cards. Sucks a little bit, but it's not, like, crucial. I can Ultra Ball and Thin and then also use Research, but this Barboach is going to be super annoying. I still have one boss in the deck, too, so technically I could draw into boss. But this Block Snorlax is going to cause some issues. So... There's the Industrious Incisors. Reversal. Okay, so I need to take down this Barboach right now because Barboach is going to be what's causing me issues. I need to take one prize and then I need to take two off of something like Luminion and go from there. So there's an instant charge. So I hit the boss, which is good, but then I have to discard it, which isn't good. I don't have a Psychic Energy. Oh, this kind of blows. Because then my opponent just promotes Snorlax and there's nothing that I can do. Um, the only thing that I can technically do is Iono. Um, God, this is awkward. I just have to pass. There's a fighting. So my opponent's down three reversals. So they are only discarding four. Which isn't horrible. Technically I could have researched, but like I need to try and do something. I need to thin my deck. Oh man. Playing against mill, control, all that fun stuff is so annoying sometimes. There's the instant charge. So I need the psychic to retreat. Okay, so there's the psychic to retreat. So I take a knockout there. My opponent brings up block locks. And I still have access to boss. And I just need to find the other energy to retreat. And no matter 
Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so go boss, bring up Whisk Cash, retreat, go into the Aspathra, Cyball, and then next turn, if my opponent brings up the Zatu again, uh, we dig four more energy potentially. Technically, I don't have to do that yet. Um, but if I dig for the energy and then use Puppet Offering, grab the boss, I need to take a knockout on one of these two. There's Silene. Heads, Tails, so my opponent can bring one card back. They could bring back Super Odd. Um, let's see, what did, it, what did they bring back? Counter Catcher. Okay, that's fine. We're hitting 150 right now, which means I can KO Snorlax as well. So my opponent is going to get the uh, counter catcher, which is fine. They bring up the Zatu. Again, that's fine. So I need to hit... Okay. I'm going to have to wait a couple turns to do it, but um, I can technically win this. So, I mean, technically, too, if I just, well, let's see. Silene, Iono, that's fine. I know that the energy retrieval is in my deck. I need to just thin it out. That way I can potentially draw into it. So there's another research that's not going to do me anything. So Ultra Ball. We'll thin the deck. So I need to Puppet Offering and Energy Retrieval in the same turn. And hope that my opponent doesn't do anything with that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything my opponent can do to discard the top two cards of my deck. I don't think there is. So I think what I do is Super Rod. We put back the energies just so that way I have access to them. And then when we go Research. Attach for turn. And then... Pass. I'm trying to think of anything else that I need to do. I don't think there is. I think next turn I just win. So my, if my opponent Ionos, then they don't Turo. Um, if my opponent Turos... Okay, so they just play Eerie. That's fine. There's no Iono, which means that we can just use Puppet Offering, grab Boss, and then Boss... KO's Luminion or Rotom. So. The only way that we would have lost that would have been if my opponent had something like. Um, a Turo plus Collapse. Or Collapse plus Turo. So. There's a Super Rod. Ultra Ball. There's the Barboach. Instant Charge. And then just to have some fun with it, we'll clear Voyant Sense. One energy. Draw two. Clear Voyant Sense. Another. Draw two. Thin ourselves. And then we can go a Puppet Offering. Grab the boss. Attach. Boss's orders. Bring up Luminion. Attach. Retreat. And then hit for 240. Take our final prizes. And my opponent concedes. So that was definitely a long game. But that was a good game. We got usage out of pretty much everything. We 
item locked. We hit with uh, Bennett. We got to use uh, the baby Bennett so that way we could grab a supporter. Everything kind of worked out how it was supposed to. Now, granted, it wasn't a meta deck that we were playing against, but on the ladder, sometimes you run into non-meta decks. But I think it really showcased the strength of a Pathra and being able to, you know, use a bunch of energy, but also having the combination of item lock to deal damage and things like that, where, you know, item lock is actually huge into control. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of Aspathra. And uh, with that being said, thank you for everything, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Later.